Patrick Farrell, Master of Wine, here with good friends in wine, Luis and Oscar. Yeah, Luis Alberto, founder of the Wine Lover community. Great to be back here in the Finger Lakes. Really excited. So, great to see Oscar again after many years. Many so this years, is, yes. This is fun. Who am I? My name is Oscar and I'm the owner, co-owner here at Herman Weimer Vineyard. And I... Uh, been running this winery for the last 15 years with my good friend Fred Merworth, who's the winemaker. We're here on Seneca Lake, beautiful, deep, skinny, long glacial lake, and right. has very special characteristics for grape growing. Tell, mm -hmm. us, tell us why you're here. So, what's very specific about Finger Lakes are these long, deep lakes. So, what happened, you know, Seneca Lake, for example, is over 600 feet deep. And because of the depth of the lake, it retains temperature right. all year round. So in the summer, it's relatively cool in the lake, and in the winter, it's relatively warm. And because of that, it, it creates a, a moderating effect around the edges of the lake, and that protects the vines mm -hmm. from devastatingly cold winter, the spring frosts, and also drags out the season mm -hmm. during the summer, and uh, helps create airflow and reduces the sea pressure. So you both have the lake effect from these local finger lakes, but also the weather pattern changed rather significantly because of the Great Lakes in the north too. Right. Yeah, and uh, how wind and weather moves through. And also so it changes a lot. Climate change has been good for the finger lakes, or not? I, that is a very strong statement to say that climate change has been good for the finger lakes. <laughs> I don't know if you can say it that way. I'm asking you. But no, no, no. So the climate change, what we've seen over the years, not necessarily so gradual increase right. of heat. We also have the challenge of erratic weather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you ask a question, you I mean, have to give you a rather long answer. To like last night. Start, did they last night. Did they last So what happened really is that we sometimes get two warm winters. Right. And then the soil and the air is warm and then the vines will bud mm -hmm. too early right. mm -hmm. and then the bud comes out and that could be devastating for spring frost. So if you're referring to heat units in the summer, which has increased, that does have changed a little bit some of the styles or opportunities, if you put it that way, right. uh, on what to grow and where to grow and uh, ripeness of fruit and so forth. So yes, nowadays you don't hear producers or winemaker be so concerned about ripeness anymore. Mm -hmm. It's more managing ripeness if and so forth. But unfortunately climate change has been the erraticness of weather has mm -hmm. been difficult to deal right. with. Yeah. So good and bad. That's right. We're also looking into other ways to manage climate change uh, because of these rains that we're getting. We need to work on drainage, airflow and so forth. So there's so, other elements. So it's challenging. Well, should we taste? Yeah, we should. Speaking, we should. We should. We should. Let's yeah, a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, cheers. Cheers. Wonderful. Great to be back. Good to have you here, my friends. Welcome, welcome. We're tasting these sparkling wines because that represents sparkling in the dry Riesling and the Cap Franc kind of represent different avenues we, as a region, are going on what we're focusing on. What I find with many of the wines mm -hmm. in this region, and your wines uh, specifically, there's a purity of fruit, mm -hmm. and there's a focus, and there's a vibrancy of the acidity. This wine is you know, focused, crisp, delightful. It's still on my palate, right? So yeah. it just goes on and on and on. Yeah, no, because of this region, we're on the edge on one of the coolest regions, right. uh, wine regions in the world. So you can make these wines that are a little bit more fresher, Light. Also, the, you can take advantage of little lower sugar levels right. in the grapes, so you have fresher, lower alcohol wines, and you can. That's why sparkling wines you capture this fruit earlier to capture acidity mm -hmm. and freshness, and can make very nice classic sparkling wines. And now we're, we're a couple of minutes later. I still have flavor oh, <laughs> in my mouth and texture and creaminess. Good flavor, which is. Yeah, the best part, right? Right. <laughs> we have a very long finish of something that mm -hmm. basically sucks, but yeah. that's not the case. This is really good. <laughs> we'll have to edit him out later. So <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting thing because because when discussing elements of quality, mm -hmm. right, there can be typicity. There's balance. There's complexity in terms of how many different flavors you have, and then there's length. 
Mm -hmm. right? But Luis is right. I've had many bad wines that have lot long flavors, mm -hmm. but they're long bad flavors. Yeah. <laughs> And you want long, good flavor. Exactly. Those elements all come into play. Why don't we try the recent? Because okay. I mean, the region's known for its recents. Well, they are part, a big part of why the finger list is known for its reason, right? Right. I think that's yeah. like the trademark almost for. That's right. For the finger legs and for our winery. Mm -hmm. And this is our regular Riesling, which is the most important wine that we mm -hmm. do. That's what we put the focus on. We do a little more volume of this wine, but through our, all our acreages, all the Rieslings are kind of, the fruit is up for grab to make this a, a good product, high quality, ageable wine, balanced and good value. Riesling is valued by wine geeks, sommeliers, <laughs> winemakers, and undervalued by consumers, but my God, it's hard to find a better wine to have with a range of fruits. Yeah, the flexibility that you can have with a glass yeah. of Riesling is amazing. That's right. You can That's have right. It pretty much anything. I think maybe hopefully that's changing a little bit though. Yeah. I'm going to host a seminar here next week called Never a Bride, Always a Bridesmaid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's <Wow>. Riesling. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good. But it's starting to show up as the main wine on the yes. table now. Mm -hmm. I think that's a positive trend. And you see restaurants are carrying it by the glass and mm -hmm. so forth. And this has this wonderful focus, classic aromatics and this minerality on top of the citrus and the stone fruit. Yeah, delightful one. And does this see any skin contact? Uh, no, not really. But what you might pick up is a little uh, structural element mm -hmm. there. So all these wines are... The fermented on indigenous yeast, so a mm -hmm. little longer fermentation. Mm -hmm. So it will have been pushed to release a little bit mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. and that gets a little more weight mm -hmm. to it. Some of these tanks were fermented for, you know, six to eight months. So what are your favorite dishes to have with the sparkling wine and the recent? The freshness of these wines make them play well with others. <laughs> Quite yeah. well, you know, they play well with others. Even difficult dishes. So. Even if you do vinegar in your salads or if you mm -hmm. have asparagus uh, so forth, it can handle it. But I do, do both, they drink the, both of these on, on summer, summer dishes, salads and so forth. Even uh, with, with a creamier dressing, I love it. Yeah, so the acidity cuts through yeah, the does. fat in, yeah. the, in, in the cream. Even if you use some spices, the gentle alcohol doesn't heat it up too much mm -hmm. either. This is a dry thing. This is a dry Riesling, yeah. Uh, you also produce uh, Rieslings that have some sugar on them. That's right. We do some year we can do 13 different Rieslings. Wow. Yeah, we seen. have reserve versions, we have single vineyards, we have all kinds of wines, but also some residual, some late harvests and mm -hmm. semi-dry Rieslings, absolutely. And the reason I ask is that you mentioned spicy food, is that I find that uh, sometimes having a little sweetness mm -hmm. it can help with hot dishes. Mm, that's right. And it, and, cool. and it makes for lots of flexibility. So there's 13 varieties in Chateau de Pop. Okay. <laughs> different reasons. Different reasons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. 13, yeah, yeah. 13 being a lucky number. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number. <laughs> Why don't we try the Cabernet Franc? Let's do Cabernet Franc too. So, for the viewers, Cabernet Franc comes from Bordeaux, though is probably either most famous in Saint Emilion or in the Loire Valley, mm -hmm. right? And yours is a Loire Valley. Style Riesling. Well, I think it's a finger leg style Riesling. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, don't, I think they might make finger leg style in Loire. No, I'm mm -hmm. just kidding. Mm -hmm. If you're referring to uh, a Loire style, it's a single variety right. in a similar climate as yes. Loire. Mm -hmm. Not again, not the highest of alcohol, but longer hang time. Yes. So you see good structure, not the heaviest tannins. The acidity is there, but gentle. This would be very varietally good. It's a good presentation. Good expression. Yeah. 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 This is kind of nice. If I was having this wine blind, yeah, right, which I do often, I teach blind tasting to master wine students. As the saying goes, if you hear hoofbeats, it's probably a horse and not a zebra. So on the master wine exam, it'd be much more apt to be a Loire Valley Cabernet Franc, okay, yeah. which is where I would put it blind. But that to say that it's a classic, Mm -hmm. in terms of a varietally correct, fresh, vibrant on the palate. The only difference is I think this may have a, be a bit fruitier, which, yeah. is, a, which is a positive thing. 
And less of the greenness that you can get in yeah. some of them. Of, of, and the, the green world. tone is you know, you know, a little bit of a controversy in Cap Franc if you want it there or not. I think we would like to present it in its best way, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you put it that way, and still have herbal and not too fruity, but introduce a little riper presentation of mm -hmm. Cap Franc so the full greenness go goes away mm -hmm. a little bit. So I think it dances, it balances quite nicely. And for me, when I'm in a restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, Cabernet Franc is something that I look for because it goes well with food, and often it's a very good value wine on a restaurant menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love, I love Cabernet Franc. Luis and I were judging at the Raise a Glass Foundation, yeah, yeah. Raise a Glass uh, Foundation tasting that was raising money for a children's camp mm -hmm. and also uh, raising money for distribution of leftover medical supplies. And I was a lone wolf at my table. Okay. And the thing is, I'm very sensitive to rot. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody at, at my table was sensitive to rot. Okay. And, and so one of the challenges here in the Finger Lakes is rot. One of the challenges on the entire east coast of the United States is rot because of humidity and uh, rain at different parts of the uh, ripening cycle. Not a hint. Uh, pure, beautiful fruit. Mm -hmm. Whereas there, Again, up and down the East Coast, there can be yeah. one. So, yeah, in this case, here, are you referring to if there's acidic uh, and so forth in the, in no. the wine or botrytis yeah. or in, yeah, yeah. is that yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Those? More a bunch rod where you start yeah. seeing some early browning. Yeah. And, I mean, for me, yeah. it's, a, it's a very specific chemical note. Here we sort everything, hand pick and hand sort. So that is uh, something important, but it's not only in the East, but any region that is of a cooler region where you might have that as a problem with disease pressure. So when you sort the fruit and you get the must is clean in that sense, right. then, then you make you get these kinds of wines. The so there's a little bit more effort to it to remove that hurdle. An effort that costs money, right? That's right. Because you have buying the sorting table and then having skilled workers to figure it out. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just a little pet can detect one bunch of grapes that's rotting in the entire tank. So you, you know the, the, yeah. the, the normal people that can detect a lot of yeah, water, people right. can detect one bunch that's in right. the entire tank. But I also think so when when someone like you, when you get into a professional level, as you're starting to analyze the wine, what's wrong with this wine? <laughs> it's not, it's not like that, how do I much do I enjoy it? You also become very what is wrong? rigorous. It's like a winemaker. It's <laughs> yeah, terrible right. to work That's right, it's not terrible to work with winemakers. It's like, what's wrong with this wine? <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with it. No, 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 wine. that's right. But that's how you approach it. <laughs> all through wine. Yeah. I'm sort of looking to see if there's any disease. And I'm, <laughs> I guess in another life I was I was either a dog or a pig sniffing for truffles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how many different Cabernet Francs do you produce? Just really two. Mm -hmm. Two. One that we capture fruit from all the vineyard sites that we make uh, mainly stainless steel mm -hmm. fermentation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this one, the Magdalena vineyard, uh, is a specific site mm -hmm. that we have experimented to turn the vineyards east-west instead of north-south. Mm -hmm. We planted that in the early 2000s. And the reason for that is to see if the airflow and air exchange from the lake can affect how to dry out the vineyards mm -hmm. and then not necessarily focusing on sun exposure, but focusing mm -hmm. on hang time. Yes. So uh, what we gain, what we might lose in sun exposure, might gain in ha gain in hang time. To uh, so this has worked out well that uh, agricultural experiment, and this is the last fruit that we pick, uh, looser clusters, also very densely planted. Mm -hmm. It's densely with less than a meter, so less than two and a half feet in between. So that is vineyard specific wine called Magdalena Vineyard. Uh, that, that's what I love the aromatics. So you're talking about extra hang time. When do you harvest it? Well, that's very uh, good questions because we start harvesting in the beginning of September mm -hmm. to capture the lighter fruit, brighter, higher acidity, the Chardonnay, some of the Pinot, uh, and Gewürztraminer are also early. And then the Riesling harvest starts mid-September and uh, until maybe beginning of November to then, again, capture all the nuances and the ripeness levels of mm -hmm. Riesling. That's why you make 13 different Riesling. 
you had different mm -hmm. types and also vineyard specific wines. Then at the end of harvest, by mid-October to end of October, you tend to go after the reds, the, the Blau Frankish and the Cabernet Franc. So, so it, it goes from beginning of September to beginning of November. We have got viewers that are wine experts and we got viewers that are wine novices. Mm -hmm. And so the varieties in your sparkling wine yeah. are classic varieties. Classic, yep. Yeah. So Chardonnay and uh, Pinot Noir. And speaking of Chardonnay, mm -hmm. Chardonnay is the most grown grape in the United States. Yeah. So Chardonnay is it's a variety, as you say, that grows across the country and across the world. It's a variety that grows well, adapts well, and also can be used for still wines and sparkling wines. Yes, exactly. um, so Herman's first experiment with viniferas here in the 70s included Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. And it's been grown quite well. The reason I don't, I think, why we haven't hung our hat on Chardonnay so much yet is because the Riesling did so well. Mm -hmm. and same thing with the Cabernet Franc. We wish now, when the region is now developed, that we like we should have planted more Chardonnay, we should have planted more Cab Franc earlier. But we're so focused on Riesling, yeah. which was a good. So now I think Chardonnay is coming back quite a lot here in the Finger Lake. So this Chardonnay, again, if I have to compare it to other regions. Uh, that you want to do. <laughs> You're now looking at it in a more of a cool climate region. You're getting into the Chablis exactly. areas where you do not go too heavy on oak, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, when you grow grapes in these cooler regions, again, lower ac alcohol, more delicate flavors, you tend to not use oak so much because the oak will be too dominant. Exactly. Right? However, we then get acidity that needs to salt be a little soften and round up. So there is oak in here, but neutral oak. I'm ready Gentle. to have you sainted because <laughs> you know, one of the things that I can moan about is people oaking the living daylights out of wine. If you've got delicate fruit, it doesn't need to be oaked. No. Or in this case, using neutral barrels. And exactly, wouldn't you agree? Uh, Chablis-esque. Yeah. yeah. Or America's Chablis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe something, I don't know, how can you compare with the wines from the Niagara Peninsula? This yeah, they do a very good job with the Chardonnays too. Yeah. Probably that style is yeah. becoming But, but also, the purpose is not to make an un -oak Chardonnay either. You need to, again, round it off, so we enhance the fruit. You will see a little bit more of it. I don't, I don't want to, can we say minerality anymore? Yeah, yeah. Though, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, not so tropical fruit. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more demure than that. I've been coming to the Finger Lakes to judge competitions for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, well over a decade. And the Chardonnays have developed mm -hmm. because the region by and large did Riesling well. And then the Chardonnays, there was a tendency for some producers to over oak them or sometimes for their, I don't know why, but there was uh, sometimes some rot on them. And the Chardonnays mm -hmm. overall in the region I think have, have improved greatly. And this is, this is a beautiful Chardonnay. Thank Actually, you. Yeah, I, I love the Chardonnay. It's perfect. <laughs> we were talking about value. Oh, yeah, this is not... Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, talk about value. Value. Give us an idea as, as to the prices of these wines. This specific Chardonnay we're drinking today is a biodynamically farmed Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's in the $30 range. Mm -hmm. uh, our regular Chardonnay is less than $20. Mm -hmm. it's 18 $19. Mm -hmm. Do you export your wines? We do. We do export our wines. I mean, again, going back to the Finger Lakes is getting known around the country and also around the world. So you will see our wines in Japan, China, Australia. The Scandinavian countries are committing quite a lot to, uh, to Finger Lakes now. So Norway and Sweden is going to have the wines and uh, a little bit in Germany. Obviously, the Germans have their own reasoning. So <laughs> I don't know if we can fight that battle <laughs> there. We might just go, we'll go via Germany into Sweden. The <laughs> water called the Mosul. <laughs> yeah. There's a rumor. Are, There's are a rumor you, that they have some reasoning there. Are you in South Korea? We have a lot of viewers from we, South Korea. Not yet. We don't have anything, but we had a gentleman who's looking forward to mm -hmm. import that. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. Oscar, I'd like to thank you oh, well, on behalf of Bernadette and I'd Nine. like to film another half an hour. <laughs> 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 How's you match me? <laughs> this has been wonderful. Yeah. I've long been a fan of the wines. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful being here. Wonderful having a nice chat with you. Yes. Viewers, give us a thumbs up, a like, comment. We'll have links to the winery website. Okay. 
and uh, check out the Finger Lakes, check out this yeah. beautiful wine. And come and visit. Come, yeah. come and visit. Come and visit. That's the best part. You should come for the wine. Of course, there's restaurants, uh, new restaurants and so forth, but also the beauty of the Finger Lakes, the waterfalls and the forests and the gorges and the hikes. And anyone can enjoy it. Kids, there's kids have activities too, while the parents are drinking. Raise your glass of wine. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, okay cheers. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, my Good friend. Good to see you again. Great to see you.